guys, what's up? It's Dark Mech here, and I've been wanting to make a video series like this for some time now. And with Legion just being released, it seems like the perfect time for me to do something like this. So I'm going to do a series called Tank Legion. Uh, in this first episode, we're going to look at what is a tank, uh, what's the role of a tank, choosing a tank class, and the racials that go along with them. Now, the idea behind this series is to help people who are new to the game, uh, even people that have been playing for some time, that are you know been playing DPS or healers, that want to have a go at tanking. I read on a lot of forums, uh, WoW, Reddit, and things like that, MMO Champ, people that want to have a go at tanking, people that like the idea of tanking, uh, but they either have too much sort of anxiety in, in uh, attempting a new role. They're worried about the neckbeards who will jump all over them if they don't know what they're doing into a, uh, going into a dungeon or a raid. And the whole reason that I want to make this series now is that Legion is the perfect time to take up tanking if this is something you're interested in. With the major overhaul to class changes in 7.0 with the pruning, with the new expansion, with new dungeons, with new raids, nobody except for those who have really uh, sort of gone into it heavy in beta really know what the fuck is going on and what they're doing. And either do you, so it is a perfect match. You get this time at the start of an expansion where you can make mistakes, where you can go and learn by doing, so to speak, in your new role in these new dungeons. And, and it kind of gives you that freedom to do that versus I want to take up tanking eight months into an expansion, with, which is fine. I'm not saying don't do that. But then you kind of get those neckbeards that are like, how the fuck don't you understand this mechanic? We're eight months into an expansion, yada, yada, yada. So starting off guys, what is a tank and what do you need to be a good tank? Um, so a tank in a very basic sense is a controller of the instance, let's say. Um, and what I mean by this is you're the guy who whom everyone is beating on. It is your job to stop other mobs from hitting other players. Um, it's, it's known as threat and aggro and your job is to hold the aggro, to have the highest aggro on all the mobs so they are all hitting you and not hitting the other players in your party. That in a very basic sense is what a tank's role is, to have aggro of everything. There are lots of other definitions and explanations into it, but that's our basic one we're gonna go with. You generally, to be a good tank, you have to have good spatial awareness. You've gotta make sure that you are not standing anything, ba anything bad. You also have to make sure that your positioning allows other players to not stand in anything bad. You have to have good reaction time. Um, you need to be able to pick up mobs as they spawn, be it on the left side of the screen, the right side of the screen. You may have to spin your camera while you're moving to watch where they're coming from. Um, you yeah, may be pulled by a fatty DPS. It's your job then to save them. Um, you generally need to know the encounters. Um, now, and DPS, so this is nothing against the DPS role, but they can usually fake their way through an encounter a hell of a lot easier than a tank can. Um, and that's basically due to just not standing in the bad stuff. It's the core principle behind WoW. Um, whereas a lot of encounters in dungeons these days have tank-specific mechanical requirements around active mitigation to stop you from getting a debuff or getting dead. Um, raids require tank swaps and things like that. So knowing encounters enables you to A, be a better tank. It lets you know when you need to use your defensive abilities properly at the correct time to make the most out of them. Um, now, I'm not saying, and I'm 100% not saying this, you don't need to go and watch every fucking video on the internet. You don't need to read every guide on the internet. You don't need to know the dungeon journal in your sleep. But it certainly helps to have an idea of what you are doing in the dungeon. And again, that just separates a really good tank from maybe an average tank. The start of the expansion kind of gives you a bit of a waiver to that rule because you really get that learn by doing experience from it because no one in that dungeon may actually know the boss. Um, so it means that you can mess up. It means that you can stand in something bad and learn from that if reading is not your thing. So again, a really perfect time if tanking something you're interested in to get into it now. As I mentioned before, you need to be mindful about your positioning. And, and this goes a lot with, you know, even newer DPS and things like that. You need to understand the core concepts behind the boss so that you can move the boss into spaces where other people are able to move around DPS freely and not get caught up. You need to make sure that you're not line of sighting your healer if there's pillars involved. Um, so, you know, I make it sound like this is really large role to tanking it. And, and this is kind of a, a balcony view of tanking, which makes it look you know, like there's so much going on, but these are the things that will separate a good tank from one that has his head up his ass sort of thing. 
Um, and lastly, and this is very much dungeon focused, but you, you control the pace of the dungeon. You are kind of the dungeon leader in setting the, the pace for that run. Um, once raiding comes out and outgear DPS start featuring into your daily heroics or, or your mythics or something like that, the expectation is that they want the dungeon to go as quickly as possible. And this is where, you know, and the tank forums were alive with it uh, in WAD of DPS pulling ahead of the tank because they want it to go faster. So you need to understand the limitations of your group. You pull too slow, people get shitty. You pull too fast, you get dead. So it's about understanding, you know, the DPS in your group, what you're capable of pulling, and then catering the pace of that dungeon to that group. So if I haven't turned you off tanking, and hopefully I have, and as I said, this is a, a very balcony view of what tanking is this is this is everything that it requires to be a, a good tank and not everyone is a good tank and you don't have to be a good tank to start with but these are the things that you want to aim to move towards so if tanking sounds like fun to you and something you're interested in the next step is that you need to pick a class so you've got six choices six options when it comes to wanting to play a tank class um, now i'm not going to give you full class overviews because the the video would end up going for a fucking hour if i did that um, if you want a specific class guide for a beginner in regards to rotation, talents, stats, and even the artifact trait tree or something like that, let me know and I will make you one. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to give you a sort of a brief summary of, 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 the, of the tank classes just in my own words, so to speak. So first up is the warrior. So this is the original gangster of the tanking world. Sword and board hero in plate armor. You're charging into packs, you're slamming mobs with your shield, you're using ignore pain which creates huge painless absorb barriers, you're using your shield blocks uh, to block attacks, you're parrying with your sword. It's the very essence of, of a standard warrior, so to speak. Um, next is the paladin, so holy warriors. They're decked out in plate armor again and they're the second sword and board tank on offer. Paladins have spinning magic hammers, they consecrate the ground they walk on, they can heal, they ride a magic horse. Uh, they summon magic bubbles, which allows them to hurf back to the inn really quickly. Uh, they also bash people with a shield, and they use the light as their weapon. Third is the Death Knight. And this was the first hero class that was added into World of Warcraft in the Wrath of the Lich King. And if you're going to level 1 and not boost it, you're going to start at level 55. Generally, Death Knights are OP as fuck. There's no beating around the bush with it. They are a two-handed weapon tanking class in plate armor. They're AoE monsters. Uh, they have a mass grip, they have a single grip, they have an arranged interrupt, they blood, uh, boil blood, they leave death and decay on the ground, they heal via their major resource dump, which is Death Strike. They're pretty fucking cool tanks, guys. Um, fourth is the Monk, which is a staff-wielding ninja in leather. Uh, you roll or torpedo across distances, you spin around doing the crane, you smash people in the face, you drink beer, you breathe fire, and you collect orbs and never die. So they're also a really fun tank class to play. Uh, the Druid is the Yogi Bear of the tank world strapped in leather. So you've got a stumpy tail, you growl like Winnie the Pooh with no honey, you slash targets and turn them into Leonardo DiCaprio and the Revenant. Um, you can take a buttload of damage. You are basically a big ball of metal fur. Um, the new skins also make being a bear very appealing if it wasn't appealing beforehand to you. The, new the newest addition to the tribe is the Demon Hunter at number 6. So this is the second hero class to be added into WoW. You start at level 98 on a Demon Hunter and you would be stupid to waste a level 100 boost on a Demon Hunter. So don't do that. It takes just over an hour, let's say, to get from 98 to 100. Um, you're a dual-wielding Batman tank. So you've got lots of self-healing. You've got shitloads of mobility. Um, you've got bat wings. You shoot laser beams from your eyes and you can transform into a big Billy Badass Demon as well. So they are also a lot of fun to play. So there are your six choices, guys, and I often get asked on Twitch or on YouTube, what do you think I should level? What do you think I should play? What tank class do you think I should be? The answer to this is that nobody can actually tell you this. Not even Kangaroo Jack here on a webcam. Um, unless you're playing for sheep stations, you know, you're at the, the world's top, you're going for stupid, ridiculous times and mythic pluses and things like that, you don't need to focus on what is the most OP, what is the most optimal tank for end game. Just play what you find fun. Um, my advice is to try them all. And I know that's probably not what you want to hear because people just want to be told what to do sometimes. But if you try them, you're very, very quickly going to find out which tanks you like, which tanks you don't like, what class fantasy you buy into, what abilities you enjoy, what rotations you enjoy. 
I, I don't think somebody telling you what tank class to play is going to give you as much buy mm -hmm. into that class. It's also not going to probably get you through in longevity specs because you're going to play what you enjoy in the end of the day, not what you feel forced to. Um, in terms of a starting a starting point for information, just from my own opinion, if you're after this, in terms of complexity and a harder tank to learn, in, in terms of a, a top level, I would say monks and demon hunters are probably going to require the most or the highest skill cap to be really effective tanks. Um, and that's just my opinion. The Probably the four easiest to learn tanks are going to be warriors, paladins, druids, and death knights with the 7.0 changes. Um, and again, just my opinion. A great player is always going to make any class they play amazing. That's just the way it works. But for my advice for you, play them all, find one you like, and just go with that. Don't worry about what the forums are saying in regards to who the best is and who's viable and yada, yada, yada. Play what you want to play. So moving on, guys, to the races. So you picked your class that you want to play, and then you've got to pick a race. So are they important? Um, again, this is a min-max question. I'm going to go through each of the races uh, and go over their tank-specific racials. We're going to start with the Alliance, we'll then move on to the Horde, and then we'll talk about it when we finish. So, starting with the Alliance, uh, Night Elves, you get a 1% nature resistance off the bat. You get Quickness, which increases your chance to dodge melee and range attacks by 2%, and it also increases your movement speed by 2%. Dwarfs get 1% Frost resistance. Might of the Mountain, which your critical strike bonus damage and healing is increased by 2%. They also get Stone Form, which removes all poisons, diseases, curses, magic effects, bleed effects and reduces your physical damage taken by 10% for 8 seconds. Uh, human, every man for himself removes all stun effects. It's like a trinket for a PvP. Um, human spirit, you gain 2% more of all secondary stats. So secondary stats, critical strike, haste, mastery, versatility. Uh, Drenai, get gift of the Naru, which is heal for 20% of your total health. Heroic Presence increases strength, agility, and intellect. That scales with your level. I don't know what the exact number is for 110, sorry. Uh, they also get 1% Shadow Resistance. Worgens get Viciousness, so increased Critical Strike by 1%. Dark Flight is a 40% movement speed buff for 10 seconds. Uh, Aberration reduces Shadow and Nature Damage by 1%. Gnomes get 1% Arcane Resistance, they get Escape Artist, which escapes the effect of any Immobilization or Movement Speed Reduction effect. Uh, they get Expansive Mind, which will increase by 5% your Max Rage, your Runic Power, and your Energy. They also get Nimble Fingers, which gives you 1% Haste. So they are the Alliance Ratios that you will have to deal with. Onto the Horde guys, uh, Orcs get Blood Fury, which increases your Attack Power for 15 seconds. They get Hardiness, which is duration of stun effects are reduced by an additional 20%. Trolls get Berserking, increases your melee ranged and spell haste by 15% for 10 seconds. Uh, trolls have Devudu Shuffle, reduces the duration of all movement impairing effects by 20%. And they also have Regeneration, which health regen rate is increased by 10%, and 10% of your total health regen may continue during combat. Blood Elves, they get Arcane Acuity, increases Critical Strike by 1%. Arcane Torrent silences all enemies within 8 yards for 2 seconds and restores a certain percent of your main resource. Magic Resistance reduces the damage to be, uh, reduces, reduces the chance, sorry, to be hit by spells by 2%. Torrens have Brawn, Crit Strike bonus uh, damage and healing is increased by 2%. Endurance increases the stamina by a certain percentage that scales with level. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's about 1,283 extra stamina at level 110. Uh, they get nature resistance uh, by 1% nature, uh, nature damage reduction. And they get war stomp, which stuns up to 5 enemies within 8 yards for 2 seconds. Undead guys get Will of the Forsaken, and I kept telling myself not to say Will of the Foreskin. Uh, removes any charm or sleep effect. Shadow Resistance, they get reduces shadow damage taken by 1%, and Touch of the Grave, your attacks and damage spell have a chance to drain the target, dealing shadow damage to that target, and it heals you for the amount of damage you did to the target. Goblins are last up for the Horde. Uh, you get Rocket Jump, which is a great mobility ability. Uh, they get Rocket Barrage, which launches rockets with fire damage at the target, and they get Time is Money, which is 1% extra haste. There is then, of course, the racial that applies to both factions, Horde and Alliance, and that is the Pandarian, or the Panda, and that's not really a race, that's, well, it's a race, yeah, it is. Um, Quaking Palm, so they get strikes the targets that incapacitates them for four seconds, 
and Epicurine, or however you say that, uh, you get double the stats buff from well-fed effects. So that is a really awesome racial to pick up. So again, you can see there are shitloads of racials, guys, and obviously some of them are better than others. But in the end of the day, again, as I put it back to sheep stations, which no one outside of Australia will even understand, but we're talking great importance here, world first and things like that, play what you like the look of. Or if you've been playing and you can't live without a racial, play with that race. Um, again, it's not, it's not going to make or break your tank class. No one's going to not take you into a dungeon because you're this, or you're not going to be able to get into a normal or heroic raid because of this. Um, even Mythics, unless again, you're at that world sort of top format, it's, it's not really that important. Um, so they're the races, guys. You've gone through the tank classes, so what races can what tanks be? So if you decide to go with a warrior, you've got the option from Alliance side of Drenai, Dwarf, Gnome, Human, Night Elf, and Worgen, so you're completely open pretty much. Uh, Horde have got Blood Elf, Goblin, Orc, Torrin, Troll, and Undead. Pandaren, of course, for Alliance or Horde. If you want to be a Paladin uh, Alliance, you've got Drenai, Dwarf, and Human to choose from. Orc have got Blood Elf and Torrin. Death Knights get Drenai, Dwarf, Gnome, Human, Night Elves, and Worgens. Horde get Blood Elf, Goblin, Orc, Torrin, Troll, and Undead. Druids have the choice of Night Elf or Worgen. From the Horde side, they get the choice of Torrin or Troll. Monks get Drenai, Dwarf, Gnome, Human, and Night Elf. Blood Elf, uh, Horde get Blood Elf, Orc, Torrin, Troll, and Undead. And there's also Pandaren, Pan Pan Pandaren in that. And Demon Hunters are Night Elf or Blood Elf only. Um, so they are the cl classes and the racials, guys. And as I've said throughout this entire video, play what you want to play in the end. Um, and, and be happy with what you're playing as well. Because you have to look at it all day if you're playing well all day. You have to look at it and you have to be happy with it. It's not worth running around as a moo cow if you fucking hate cows. It's not worth running around as a pointy-eared gremlin if you hate goblins. So choose whatever it is that you like the look of, and I've always been with Night Elves because that's just the way I roll. Um, and so that's just the, the Swiss what I play as a tank. The 2% dodge is fantastic, but that's just what I play because that's what I like the look of. Um, so that is pretty much going to be it for episode one, guys. I do want to try and keep these videos. It's gone for about 17 minutes already, and I do want to try and keep them of a around a 15 to 20 minute nature. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to cover off how to be an efficient tank, what's going to help you be an efficient tank, things like add-ons, how to set up your key bindings, macros, the general basics of tank positioning for things that you need to know, um, and anything else I can think to throw in there that is going to make your life easier along those categories. Um, as we go through this series, I'm also going to do dungeon guides, so I'm going to show you what mobs to pull, when to pull these packs, what packs to line of sight, where to position them and things like that. So by the end of this series, if you are wanting to tank, you should have all the confidence in the world to be able to go into these dungeons and start your little adventure as a tank that you've always wanted to be. Um, if you've got any questions at all, guys, please do hit me up in the comments. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. It really does help me out and I really do appreciate the support. Uh, and otherwise, guys, I will see you all in episode two. Thank you very, very much for checking out the video. I will see you all next time. See you guys.